thought to the creator of the universe, I mean, they are blessing you with mm. what's there mm. that day. Mm. They're blessing you with that. And it's there for you. It's there. Mm. Just take it. Just receive it into your soul, into your body, mm. and enjoy it. Mm. I often say in the yoga classes that the only thing between us and the moment is our ideas about it. You know, mm. when those drop away, then you're there. You're there, and there it is. Mm-hmm. We're moving into a section where we're going to do a little bit of uh, talking about, you know, art and poetry and things like that. And have you ever heard of haiku? Haiku. It's a type of poetry. Um, what is it? It's a specific number of sy- syllables. Isn't that correct? If you're going to write um, haiku, traditionally it's five syllables in the, for the first line, seven syllables for the second line, five syllables for the third line. So some of the stuff we have, I don't know if it's exactly uh, five, seven, five or not. And so here, here's one, and, and I think Clyde's going to really appreciate this one. I really appreciate this one. It says, midstream halt. The horseman looks up at the falling stars. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Yeah. Doesn't that do something? <laughs> that, that's beautiful. <laughs> Are you familiar with haiku poet form no, at all? No, not at all. Not at all. Is that the just, first haiku you've heard? That, that's the first thing I've ever I'm, heard of that. I'm watching you. Just lighting, Clyde's lighting up. But just listening to that. Like Clyde is a haiku. You're a haiku in yourself. You're <laughs> a one-man You're a one man haiku. Hmm. Well, this, this was uh, taken from a book called Haiku Enlightenment. So it's interesting that these terse, like, little statements can do that. You want another one? Sure, go ahead. All right. I am nobody. A red-sinking autumn sun took my name away. Oh, I have to get this and read this. This is too much. <laughs> <laughs> I this, love this is, it. This I is an ancient um, art form called haiku. It, it, it's, um, this, this is from a book called Haiku Enlightenment. Written by uh, Gabriel Rosenstock. He's an Irish haiku writer. Read something else. A crust of bread jumps with the sparrows round the courtyard. (laughs) (laughs) Mandy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's. I have to read this. This is an awesome. You want here? You want to read a couple of them? There. Here's a. Find one. You see one there that you like? The autumn squall blows the eagle over the edge of the crag. Uh, night disappears behind the mountain. Deer is bellowing. Really. What does that do for you, Clyde? Oh, it, it, it's there. That's just what it's about. Um, the, that there example, night disappears. Okay, so the night is going. And then behind the mountain... And the deer is bellowing. Well, it's a new morning. It's a new morning for them. They're getting up and they're doing their thing. <laughs> it, it, it's just like a, sort of like I was saying, uh, life is, it's there. It's there for us to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and in these poems, like a lot of the extras just cut away. Yeah. And it's just an essence that's left. You know, some of them deal with, with, with um, the range of things. Like, we're talking about, like, bliss and beauty and, you know, life is full of, like, challenge and sadness and hardship, too, you know. But there's a beauty to that, too. And the, these poems often uh, touch on that, too. Got to find another one there, Clyde. This one is, um, they've cut down the willow. The kingfishers don't come anymore. Autumn, I look at the moon without a child on my knee. Hmm. Wow. It's incredible. I don't know. Here, here's one. Trapped inside a pot at the bottom of the sea, the octopus dreams. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have you got one for us? Did we, did we read this one yet? I don't know. If we read it again, we'll read it. If we That's read it, we'll read it again. It'll be different. Hmm. Summer fog, moonlight blowing from tree to tree. Hmm. Mist about the grass, rain silent, evening calm. Hmm. Well. What, what else do you have? Did we read them all? Well, there's one here. I, I really, I really like frogs. 
I've always liked frogs. <laughs> I really, really like frogs. Putting his hands together, frog, reciting a poem. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde, you love these. <laughs> yes, I do actually. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's just it's. Mm. And, and in this book, in the book, Gabriel does a little bit of teach, a little bit of writing where he teaches, and yeah, may, maybe I shouldn't get into it, but he writes here that haiku can be pleasurably pursued by atheist, skeptic, and believer alike. It can adapt to any language, any culture. Someone asked the former Zen teacher, Tony Packer, can a leaf swirling to the ground be my teacher? Her answer is what every haikuist should know. Yes, of course. This instant of seeing is the timeless teacher. The leaves are just what they are. Mm. Mm, the leaves are just what they are. Yeah, that's what it is. But then what it is, you know, when the story drops away is... Leaves are just what they are, but then they're that richness, you know. They reveal themselves. Hmm. The haiku creates a kind of, there's a gap that's kind of created, a space. Yeah. The haiku, there's a term for it, I think, the haiku gap, the haiku um, interval, perhaps. Hmm. And in that is like just the potential of everything. Hmm. Of even of the universe itself. Gabriel Rosenstock writes the dynamic pause. In haiku, we pause for a few concentrated seconds, not to escape from the helter-skelter or tedium of existence, but to allow ourselves seep into the life of things in a dynamic way. Haiku is a good way of coming to a full stop. Summer drought, the dazzling stars all become pale. <laughs> That you can feel that full stop, that interval. Yeah. It's a silence. It's a deep silence. It's 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 a silence. Mm. It's like beyond silence in a way, almost. Mm. Yeah. It's an emptiness, fullness type of type of interval. So the most the most famous haiku yeah. was by Basho. Mm. My favorite. An ancient pond. Frog jumps in. Water sound. Oh, I thought it was big frog jumps, splash. <laughs> There's like a hundred translations of it. <laughs> There's like a hundred. Or yeah, I kind of like water sound. It just yeah, there's the delicateness mm. to it. Mm. Water sound. Water sound. But that's just one trend. That's just one translation that I just recited. I like water sound yeah, too. Water sound could be splash. <laughs> like yeah. it could just be the slipping in sound of it. <laughs> Have you guys written any haikus or? <laughs> no, you ever any. You probably could. I think, Clyde, can you write one off the top of your head? Maybe no. something. Usually they involve nature, and they involve little shifts somewhere. I know that James Traverse writes haiku. Does he? He, I writes, didn't know that. he writes beautiful haiku. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, think I didn't know that about James. James is our partner in our um, non-duality satsangs, really. Yeah. Not just our partner, but the guy who's. He wrote a idea haiku was. and sent it to Adya. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Poetry, poetry gets close, gets close to to what we've been sort of dancing around. Hey, poetry can get pretty close, and we can talk about it. We can talk about it, but you know, we can only just talk about it. Mm. You know, it doesn't come close to how you felt this morning on the beach. No, it doesn't come close. No, no, words are, words are a little different than yeah. than the actual energy that is absorbed by the yeah. body and the eyes and through your mind. With um, this morning in, in the salt marsh, uh, there was a thousand, a thousand geese in the sky. <laughs> Did you see them? Oh, the geese, the, the geese uh, actually, the first time I seen them was at Rainbow Haven last year. Hmm. And I heard this, it was dark. And was over and I heard this noise in the, out in the water and I, I mean I knew what they were but I didn't it just sounded like there was a thousand of them and really I was kept on walking on the beach and the first thing there's a loud noise and off they come and there'd be a flock of them you know probably 30 or 40 but it kept going on pretty near the whole walk of the beach but that was in the nighttime and 
one other evening there, there was a full moon. And the same thing happened. But what really was amazing to me is the moon was just so high and the geese, when they were flying, they flew through the moon, mm. like through the light of the moon. It was just so beautiful. It couldn't be captured on film, but it was captured in my mind and it's still there. Now this year I've seen the geese several times, but uh, it's incredible. Just watching them in their ways, watching the way they mm. fly.